if you guys have seen enough of my channel, then you'll know that if there is a tank that I'm playing and then all of a sudden I become a god with it, that's mainly because I was supposed to be doing a video for another vehicle. <laughs> and that's right, you guessed it. While I was making a video for the FC20 Biz, I became a god in the P40. Hey guys, it's Jim here, and welcome back to War Thunder. And in today's video, we are playing Titanis Heavy Tank. Basically, the one and only Heavy Tank. A Heavy Tank that is basically lighter than a Sherman, the P 40. Not to be confused with the American aircraft. If I'll be honest though, I'm not sure if I should really call this thing a Italian Sherman, but rather an Italian T 34. And before you guys say, oh, you're just saying this because of slope, right? Well, not only that, you see. It is 50mm upper front plate right here, that unfortunately if you don't angle, even Sherman 75mm and the German 50mm can easily punch right through this without any issues. However, what you can do is angle. And if you angle, you'll be surprised at what type of rounds you can actually bounce with this thing. And if you're worried about your sights, not to worry. You have 45mm on your side right here, that is also slow, even though it's a, only a little bit. It's more than enough to bounce most shells that you come across and better rating 3.3 and best case scenario if you get down tiered and best case scenario if you get down tiered. However, be a little bit careful of two things though. Firstly, your lower half of your sights is only 40mm without any slope so players in the know will definitely try and shoot this as well as um, German long 75mm guns like the Panzer 4 F1, Panzer 4 G. Unfortunately though, you don't exactly have the luxury of Realistic battle matchmaking where the Italian tanks will not face the German tanks. As well as German tanks are also showing up in other factions as well, so those guns will just shoot right through the armor without any issues. As well as Soviet APH APC with that ridiculous angle of penetration, because you know, Soviet. And then moving up to the turret armor, well something to keep in mind is this. Now, you do have a very thick turret armor right here, 48mm sitting on top of another 48mm plate right here. Yeah. Not a lot of guns can actually go right through this, or at the very most, the armor will just whittle down the shell to a solid armor piercing that doesn't really shrimp too much. However, be very careful of this. 50mm turret cheeks right here that doesn't really have an angle, so a lot of guns can definitely go right through this. Players in the know will simply wait for you to point a gun at them, and then they can just shoot this. And then especially if you're dealing with tanks that has explosive filler in the AP shells, that's an easy one shot right there, if you're not careful. Now here's a little interesting note that many players don't really notice. But Jim, what's so special about the rear turret? Well, you have 45mm plate right here that's sitting underneath a 23mm plate. Doesn't seem like it's a lot, right? Well, consider the fact that in between these two plates, there is another 50mm plate right here. What the hell is going on back here? I really have no idea. <laughs> anyway, that aside, the mobility on this thing is actually pretty good. 330 horsepower engine pulling only 26 tons. You will definitely build up to 40 km an hour very quickly in this thing. Just be careful that um narrow set of tracks. That means uh off-road driving is a problem. And then moving on, the firepower of this thing. This is the 75 mm Ancelado 75 L34 cannon. And it's basically like a beefed up version of the short 75 mm you find on the Panzer 4 F1. These are the shells that we will be using, the armor piercing cap ballistic cap shell and the high explosive anti-tank shell. We will definitely be alternating between these two shells for a good reason. Now firstly, the armor piercing shell. These are the shells that I would definitely carry a few of at the very most. And the reason is pretty simple. Now granted, it doesn't have a lot of penetration. 79mm of penetration at point blank. It does have a decent angle of penetration but that's about it. Doesn't seem really powerful for a 3.3 vehicle, right? Well, keep this in mind though. Should this round actually does penetrate the enemy tank, that guy is not going to be alive for very long. As you can see, you have 270 grams of explosive mass 
in this 75mm package. Yeah. Even if the shot doesn't penetrate, if you're shooting something like a M10 or whatever, or an open top vehicle, the overpressure mechanic will take care of the rest. Now, unfortunately, in Battle Rating 3.3, you will be seeing Shermans and T-34s and KV-1 EV tanks. So it is recommended to carry a few high-explosive anti-tank shells. And it's performing more or less the same as the Panzer 4 F1 heat shell with the short 75mm. You pen up to 100mm of armor at any range, with a very good angle of penetration, of course. And of course, since it says high explosive, you do have a lot of explosive mess in this thing. So if you carry this shell, there's no need to carry high explosive. However, be very careful about one thing though. Heat shell means that anything in the way, bushes, fences, even the tanks, mud guards, or tracks, or even the KV-1's irritating fuel tank will eat this shell up for breakfast. Which is more or less, one thing you could do is disable the enemy tank with the heat shell and then use the AP shell to finish the guy off. And then moving on, the other aspects of the gun, you can carry up to 63 rounds of ammunition. Mm, if you want to bring all the ammunition, be my guess, it's a little bit sparse out and most of your shells are going to be down here. And at the very most, even though I carry around like 45 shells, most of them are going to be down here collectively. And not to mention, most of the time I die in the P40, it's mainly because either overpressure mechanic or the enemy tank took out 3 out of 4 of my crewmen. Not so much ammo rack. And speaking of ammunition, I am bringing 20 armor piercing cabalistic cap shell and 25 heat shell. You don't really have to follow this entirely. What you can do is maybe 30 heat shells and then maybe 10 APC BC shell. Or, um, you know, just disregard the APC BC shell entirely and just go for heat shell. Nothing wrong with that. Reloading rate 5.6 seconds. Now, granted, I am running expert crew on with level 2 leadership and mid level weapon reloading. But definitely put some points in the weapon reloading because you are definitely going to need this fast reload, especially if you are using the heat shell. Because as we all know, the heat shell kind of performs a little bit like solid armor piercing uh, in the post pen damage. Very good guidance, negative 10 gun depression, which is pretty excellent. And finally, no gun stabilizer, but the gun doesn't really bounce too much, so it's not a big deal. And so there you have it. This is the P40 heavy tank, which is not so heavy, but even so though, the armor is actually pretty effective nonetheless. And all you have to do is play this thing like the Tiger and pray to god that you don't see a Panzer 4. But anyway, that's all I gotta say about the P40. Now let's take this thing out into battle and um, let's deliver some of these meatballs that are totally not filled with some of the spiciest hot sauce. Wink wink. Yeah, keep trying, buddy. an SPG that went right. And that guy I'm worried about.
リコーブス。おお、第二印象これです。第二印象これです。レイサンブリアドラゴンとシー。So sorry, buddy. This is the power of the ice. this guy is this Britannia
Come on, Mario. There we go. So, I'll take it. So they could be making holes in the plane. <laughs> there we go. Not explosive, baby. Oh, 
Scheiße. I warned you about the freaking 105 Sherman. Why are you crowding me? Move! Oh my goodness! Come on, he get his ass. I can't don't fight in this thing. Match and quick! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> 